So will you tell the audience what the conclusion was in that paper? Just cover it a little bit because it's pretty exciting. Yeah. So there's actually many conclusions. I don't have it in front of me to like to lay out all. I think there's like 12 like primary conclusions. But I think the big the, the big most important ideas to draw from it are that they clearly summarized that the research has shown that essential amino acids as a free form supplement are significantly more impactful at stimulating muscle protein synthesis than protein powders, but even more so than whole food protein and even more so than a whole food protein as part of a mixed meal. And in no way is that to then, you know, state like, oh, you should stop eating, you know, whole food meals, but you start to see like, wow, so why is it that it's so much more impactful and how does that work? And then the other big conclusions that were drawn out of it were that for people that can't get what they need from whole food proteins, and that being really primarily people as we age, our ability, and we talked about this a lot in the last show, but our ability to digest protein and for it to stimulate muscle muscle protein synthesis, or even for it to support the muscle protein synthesis that gets stimulated from doing resistance training, it becomes diminished over time. So what are techniques, supplements that we can employ that might help us to overcome that? And there are things like, you know, giving 7.5 grams of essential amino acids to women in their 60s twice a day for three months, and they put on 10 pounds of lean muscle. That's huge. That's a very dramatic impact for women that are you know at an age where it's it's very difficult for them to even maintain, but especially to build muscle. So I think maybe you know a great place to start is just though with the with that initial point I made, like it's so much more impactful. And we covered this last time, but I think some of the summaries that they did of studies laid out even clearer. And it's it's really amazing if you think about it this way. So if you consume 70 grams of beef protein which is about what is included in like 12 ounces of steak. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of meat. That's 70 grams of beef protein. If you eat it as part of a mixed meal with say broccoli and potatoes and you know, like kind of traditional healthy American meal, it will have the same impact on muscle protein synthesis as just 30 grams of beef protein. If you eat the 30 grams of beef protein by itself. Wow. So now, I think the, the initial point that someone might bring up is, well, am I, you know, am I eating the protein just for the muscle protein synthesis? And I think this is, this is a big point to kind of clear up. The primary reason why we do resistance training, why you want to lift weights, and this goes to your point earlier about people doing lots of training, but then maybe having joint issues, et cetera, is when you do the training, you're basically telling your body like, hey, any old proteins that are no longer as functional, healthy, strong as they used to be, I wanna break those down and I wanna rebuild them. And with enough training, not only do I wanna rebuild them, I wanna build more. I wanna build more and more new proteins. And thus, it's going to not only just help rebuild proteins throughout the body, like new liver tissue, new heart tissue, new skin, et cetera, but it's actually gonna help you to increase the amount of muscle mass that you have. When you stimulate the body like that through resistance training, what comes up after that is you, you need the raw materials. Like you need the amino acids that are inside protein. That's why you eat protein to help then rebuild all that muscle, to help rebuild all those proteins in your body. And so if you're doing lots of resistance training, that's great. And then you want to feed it with protein. The thing that many people don't realize is though, the type of protein that you eat and the amount that the essential amino acids are isolated or immediately digestible, it will stimulate muscle protein synthesis on its own. And the reason why that would be so important to some people is that means that you can be building and maintaining lean muscle even on days when you're not training. That means as you age, you get to 40, 50, 60, 70, and the resistance training doesn't have the same impact or your perimenopausal and the hormonal impacts on your body are changing the amount of prioritization that, that, that resistance training has on protein synthesis. Suddenly, like, well, are there other techniques I can use that might help me to maintain and build muscle even when I can't do resistance, resistance training or support it even more? And so that's when you start to realize, okay, well, not only is the protein in the meat good to support the resistance training, but if I eat it in the right way, it alone will actually help my body to stimulate new protein synthesis in the same way that resistance training does. Not to the same degree, but in the same way. So I'll keep going down the line now. So 70 grams of beef protein is part of a mixed meal or 30 grams of it as like just isolated versus you could just have 12 grams of a whey protein isolate. And that has like three times the impact as that beef protein. 
Now, why is that? Why would the whey protein isolate, et cetera? Well, this is an interesting point because lots of times people just think that protein powders are solely effective in helping you compensate for protein you don't get otherwise in your diet. Like, you know, it's like I'm having a hard time eating that much meat as part of a daily diet. And I'm like looking for one more way to get protein and maybe I'll add a shake in the morning. What they don't realize is that by consuming something like a whey protein isolate, it's actually much more effective than the whole food protein as part of a meal in helping you to build and maintain muscle. Wow. And then when you get all the way down to free form essential amino acids, they're three times more effective than the whey protein. So you end up with this situation where if you're talking purely for the impact of consuming a beef protein or consuming an essential amino acid, gram for gram, and just its impact on muscle protein synthesis, stimulating it, gram for gram, that essential amino acid formula could be 24, 25 times the impact as a whole food protein as part of a meal. Wow. Wow, that's huge. Which is, it's very compelling. Now, again, this is not to say like, oh, well then stop eating whole food protein. Like just imagine you keep, you maintain your, your regular diet throughout the day. You eat, whether it's three meals a day or two meals or four meals a day, you try to have them be protein focused, what other, your other kind of micronutrient goals are, if that's fruits and vegetables, et cetera. But then on top of that, if you can be adding in essential amino acids, and this doesn't have to be on training days, it could be first thing in the morning, it could be kind of more doing like a snack type period, you will ensure if you're doing it on a daily basis that you are really supporting that improved muscle protein synthesis, which again, I think this is most relevant people are aging or, and another really interesting point that comes out in the study is for people who are trying to lose fat, but maintain their muscle.